2020 has been quite the year and I'm sure we're all ready to say farewell. There have been tragedies all over the world and my heart goes out to everyone who lost a job, a house, a loved one or your own sanity. It hasn't been a good time for anyone and I know there are many who have been impacted. A new year always feels like turning a blank page. And although we live in a space-time continuum and the end of the year is just based on a calendar we created to keep track of time, I think that's the whole point of having an end to a year, to serve as a point in time to reflect. When we reflect on our experiences, we create the space to learn and grow from what didn't go as planned, and we can be grateful for what we did overcome and achieve. Earlier this year, I made a video talking about my top three goals, so this is my reflection on whether I achieved those goals and what I've learned from 2020. My first goal was to keep up with Con Marie, to stick to the process and make sure my place is always in a clean and tidy state. We all know that the state of your space influences your mood, but when you're in that space all day, you really feel it on another level. You can't ignore it because it'll consume you. Transitioning to working from home this year meant my partner, my dog and I would be in a one bed, one bath condo basically all the time. Storage has always been an issue, but now we had to create desk space for us to work at. The mess and clutter, yes, my mess and my clutter, started to get out of hand and it didn't feel like a comfortable place to be in. So we added a couple storage solutions. I binged the home edit on Netflix and figured out what tools I needed to better organize my fridge, pantry, and washroom cabinet. So did I keep up with Conmarie? No, not really. I let it get out of hand before readdressing it and being home all the time forced me to act on it. But I did solve the problem and on the upside, I actually discovered new and better ways to organize my things. Having a clean and organized space is so imperative to your mood and productivity, and this year has shown just how important it is to have a calm space to work, live, and relax in. Clutter is suffocating, and an organized space gives you room to breathe. My second goal was to have a low buy year. If you've seen my regretful purchases video, you already know this didn't happen. I've definitely used shopping as a distraction from tasks, responsibilities, emotions, and honestly from just showing up for myself in my own life to accomplish the things I want. At the beginning of the year, I set out to minimize my closet and curate a wardrobe I love. But lockdown boredom and pandemic uncertainty got the best of me, and I bought a bunch of crap I didn't need even though I promised myself I wouldn't and announced it to those who witnessed my addictive shopping behavior. I got sucked back into consumerism, which pushed me further away from my real goals. As weeks of lockdown turned into months and I continued to accumulate clothes, all this stuff really started weighing on my conscience. I, I acknowledged my I relapse my and questioned my purchases, I realizing I hated having so much clothing I bought for the wrong reasons and didn't absolutely love. You know that saying, out of sight, out of mind? While I was storing my off-season clothes, donation clothes, and my I'm not sure if I want to keep this or not clothes at my parents' house, and it was very much on my mind. Stuff that wasn't physically in my condo was still my stuff and I knew I still had to deal with it at some point. So I gathered all my clothes, brought them to my place, and did a massive wardrobe declutter. It was truly upsetting and very overwhelming to see the mountain of clothes I owned, many pieces that could disappear and I wouldn't even notice. So I gave clothes to friends, donated, and listed a bunch of my impulse purchases on Poshmark. Selling your clothes is a huge pain, but it's a good reminder to be intentional with what you buy so you don't have to go through the process of selling in the near future. So no, I didn't have a low buy year. But slip ups happen and I think what's important is I recognized and owned up to my behavior. I redirected myself away from buying stuff to fulfill me and back towards inner peace and happiness. Real change takes time. I know as long as I keep pushing, I'll get there. My last big goal for the year was to incorporate fitness into my routine. At the time I made my 2020 goals video, I was in my third week of the eight week F45 challenge. I was vlogging the experience to share with you guys. I was feeling pumped and excited and then... So as you can see, F45 is shut down right now along with a lot of other businesses. Um, I meant to make a F45 challenge video, but obviously given the current situation, we'll see what happens. 
There were only a couple weeks left of the challenge and I was looking forward to sharing my journey and results, but the pandemic quickly took over our lives. So I did my best to keep up the momentum. I looked to Instagram for live classes and dug into my save folder for some exercise inspiration. In the summer, I tried to work out in the sun, but as soon as the days got colder and shorter, that didn't last. I'd say I averaged one workout per week since then, which really isn't enough to benefit me mentally or physically. So unfortunately, I was not able to incorporate fitness into my regular routine. But to be fair, there was nothing regular about 2020. I was planning to continue with F45 because I know I can't rely on myself to build and follow a workout routine. I enjoyed F45 because I didn't have to think. I show up, the equipment's there, the movements and timer are on the screen, the music is blaring, and all I have to do is follow along. So for 2021, I'm trying a few different apps that offer a similar experience at home. A program I can follow that doesn't require me to do much else other than show up and sweat. Although I didn't achieve the goals I set, there's plenty I'm grateful for this year. I'm grateful to be employed and within an industry where remote work is possible. That all my family and friends have their health. That we've kept in touch and spent pockets of happy times together when circumstances allowed for it. I'm grateful that having time at home pushed me to improve my culinary skills. I now know how to bake my own bread and make a handful of dishes I likely wouldn't have bothered to try. I've been able to spend so much quality time with my dog and distancing encouraged us to explore nature where we found a lot of peace. I'm grateful to have the means to start therapy this year so that I can develop, understand, and take care of myself. And I'm grateful to have the support of my partner through all this craziness. There are many things that are out of our control and I know everyone's 2020 has been both similar yet vastly different. I hope you found light in the darkness of this year. And if you didn't, my heart is with you and I hope you can mend and recover in 2021. Thank you all so much for spending time with me and giving me space to connect and create. I hope you take care of yourselves and keep well and I'll see you next year.